The News Hour with Jim Lair has been your trusted source of news for more than 26 years. And this week, for the News Hour Spotlight City series, Channel 9 and the News Hour team have hosted several community forums in the St. Louis area, moderated by News Hour correspondents Paul Salmon, Judy Woodruff, Spencer Michaels, and Gwen Eiffel. Tonight, we're bringing you the forum focused on the importance of downtown St. Louis, moderated by Gwen Eiffel at the St. Louis Federal Reserve. Everybody. We are here with the News Hour because we are interested in talking about not only the first 100 days, but basically using the first 100 days as a way of talking about the state of the nation, the state of the economy. What better place to come than the heart of the nation where people are struggling with exactly all of the questions which are now on the plate in Washington. And that's where I'm going to start with our panel here. We have a broad spectrum here representing tourism and business redevelopment. You name it, people whose jobs it is to recruit and to make and keep St. Louis and the region strong. This has been a tough time, not only for St. Louis, but it's been a tough time for a long time in St. Louis. You've been going through this long before the rest of the world realized this was a recession. So you've been grappling with what to do about it first. I'm going to start with Howard because he has, he's a numbers guy. He's been crunching the numbers and trying to figure out exactly how deep is this really? How deep is this recession really? How is it affecting St. Louis? And has 100 days made any difference? Uh, the St. Louis economy actually hasn't been doing as, as badly as the national economy in terms of employment. Uh, the recession here began about the same time, the fourth quarter of 2007, and uh, employment has been falling since then, but uh, not nearly as quickly as uh, for the nation as a whole. Uh, here we've lost probably about 25,000 jobs since then, uh, and that's uh, about a little more than half the rate of job loss of, of the U.S. Uh, but if you look at things historically in recessions, we tend to recently have uh, longer recessions that uh, take longer to recover from. So uh, what uh, sort of forecasts are looking at for the national economy is that employment might start picking up in the third quarter of this year, maybe six to eight months from now. But for St. Louis, it won't be until uh, a year from now. Okay, Kitty, I want to turn to your piece of this, which is tourism and getting people to come to St. Louis and understand St. Louis and enjoy St. Louis. Mm -hmm. How is, does that slow down at a time like this when people have other priorities? Well, it does slow down, um, but we are in a much better position than most of our counterparts across the country. Um, hotel occupancy in the top 25 markets in the U.S. is down about 12 percent year to date. Uh, downtown St. Louis is down 3 percent. So, uh, and we're in the top 25 markets. So we're doing better than almost everybody else in the country right now. And we also have a great mix in, in terms of our, our customer base. We have about 22 million visitors to St. Louis every year, and they come for business purposes, they come for meetings and conventions, and they come for leisure. We're one of the best family destinations in the country. We have great visitor attractions in the, in the entire region, not only the city downtown with City Museum and the Arch and those things, but, but also in the surrounding region. And so uh, people come from hundreds of miles and spend a nice weekend, and we're really well positioned. Um, I don't think anybody would lose St. Louis and boondoggle in the same sentence. So, you know, corporate... Wait, 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 what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? If I said that, what would happen? <laughs> you know, a, a corporation is not going to be criticized for holding their convention ah. in St. Louis. I see. This is not Disney World. Right. So we have great, a great hotel product. We have uh, great venues for programs. We have great restaurants. We offer a wonderful experience for convention groups, and no one is going gonna, is gonna to go after a corporation for holding their meeting here. And so I think you know, that's a, led to a stabilization of the meetings here, um, although there have been a few cancellations just because of the finances of a particular company. But what we're also seeing is that groups that might have held conventions and meetings in other places are now be able to bring those to St. Louis instead. Okay, Jim, your, your job is to bring businesses to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do that right now at this time? Well, by saying you don't have as far to fall? Mm -hmm. No. Um, I, I think we start by saying St. Louis is a great place to do business. It's been that way for a long time. And even in a challenging economy like today, the fundamental reasons that make St. Louis a great place to do business are still here. We still have our wonderful central location. Here we sit in the middle of the country with every form of transportation at our doorstep. That means a lot to business. When you look at the cost of housing here in St. Louis and compare it to the other top 20 metro areas, we're the least expensive. 
When you look at our overall cost of living, uh, we do these quarterly um, surveys with the American Chamber Research Association. Consistently, we're below the national average. You t look at those fundamental issues, and then you look at a very diverse and highly skilled workforce. We're getting some very exciting projects from the East Coast, from financial services firms that want those skills, but want to be able to hire those people for 40% less. They want to be able to have a cost of occupancy in a Class A office building uh, that is $18 to $20 a square foot compared to rents that people were uh, getting in Midtown Manhattan last year, $165 a square uh, foot. So you're telling me that the recession is making your job easier? In a way, it is. In, in certain industry sectors, and Rodney knows this, we have some very exciting projects right now, which I think is a surprise to most people. These are significant projects. They're they're name brand firms in, in many industries. You can, you can and, tell me. And, <laughs> <laughs> I will I would, share it with a couple million people. When maybe in an hour or so we'll talk <laughs> about some of those. But um, do I wish we had more projects in the pipeline? Absolutely. But I think the, the good news is we have some very exciting projects. St. Louis is on the short list, and we're going to work very hard to win those. Now, there are 143, I read somewhere, statewide projects for, uh, that were approved from the stimulus package, but not majority of them didn't come to St. Louis. So how does the stimulus package help St. Louis? Yeah, I think the stimulus package uh, helps us. Uh, we, we did receive uh, some monies for federal transportation kind of projects. Uh, that's going to help us with streets uh, all Sidewalks, through. Sidewalks, repaving. Uh, like repaving, that. but you know, also it, it helps us with a number of projects uh, that we're working on on the north side of the city uh, where we're trying to develop some mixed income uh, communities and these streets and other enhancements will, will help us. There's some work that we were already starting to do, but it even helps us even, even further. So what challenges has, have the down, has the downturn presented for you? For us, it just has required some shifting uh, from the developers' perspectives on what works for the current financial markets. And it's easier for our developers to get financing for office buildings and for uh, apartments than it is for condos right now. Uh, we have industrial developers that are securing financing for uh, industrial parks on both the North and the South Riverfront. We have a very much a very much a working port. Uh, it happens to be one of the, the largest ports in the inland ports in the country. But we're trying to uh, repair our municipal dock and to modernize that and to also increase capacity so that it could be used for, in, in addition, multimodal kind of facilities like large shipping uh, containers. Uh, we really, as, as, as Jim mentioned, uh, we, we have to be very uh, effective in a multimodal kind of way. Many of the companies looking to relocate here uh, to St. Louis are impressed with our central location, but also they want to see that multimodal. They want to see barge, rail, truck, access and being in the central part of the country. And having this particular dock and doing repairs and maintenance and enhancement to that dock, as well as increasing the capacity for international uh, shipping containers, helps us and the stimulus money is also going to be used for that. And the potential for growth is what? If just, just from that one project, say? Just from that one project, it, it provides us an opportunity to tap into uh, some China business that uh, we have a number of people across the region working on and looking for opportunities uh, not only with air but with barge, rail, and truck. I think some of the things that will occur from the stimulus package that are going to be very important to help us recruit new business into the future are the infrastructure improvements that we've already talked about. It's very important that people can move about and in and out of the region easily. Uh, education is extremely important. I understand some of those stimulus funds are going to go towards education. The first questions that we're asked when we're recruiting a new business here are what skills are available and how deep are those skills and at what price. And by having a, a skilled and educated workforce, that's going to help us compete going forward. And then some of the elements of the package that are focused on innovation and helping make us smarter to do things better, to look at sustainability in this region, all those things are going to help us not only in the short term, but I'm very confident in the long term as well. Uh, I think the disconnect is that 
on average, St. Louis is, is lagging in, uh, in education. We have some, a lot of great schools and some good universities, but uh, in terms of the city itself, that's, it's no secret that that's not been going well, to, to say the least. And uh, this is quite a, probably a bit of a drag on the, uh, the local economy because uh, the city uh, uh, schools just aren't, aren't very good. But, you know, all of the other work, all the fine work that all the other panelists do um, is great. But for long-term growth and higher growth, it's education and an uh, educated workforce uh, is really the key. Ronnie wants to jump in, then I want to turn to Kitty on that, too. Well, I think that, uh, you know, with education, uh, we are seeing some improvements. We have a new superintendent of the public schools. Uh, one thing Jim will tell you that I think he'll tell you uh, when we're out doing, working together. Now that uh, you've planted it in his not, mind. Not that <laughs> planted his mind. Thanks, Rodney. But, <laughs> but one of the things that when we're out uh, trying to solicit companies to come here, we really don't run into an education problem because what they see... How can that be? They see a, a lot of options. They see independent schools. They see parochial schools. Uh, they see, uh, you know, even in the public school system, one of our schools, Metro, is a blue, rib blue ribbon school. And so it, it performs uh, quite well. So, uh, and I think just recently, uh, both businesses, churches, and uh, universities are kind of coming together with a new initiative uh, to work collectively on some of the schools that have the most challenges to raise those scores up. In terms of recruiting, uh, companies that want to come here, they want to put their kids in, in good schools. And that's, that can be done. You know, if you have a really uh, high-flying company, you can live in Clayton and your, your kids are educated. Uh, but most uh, job growth and employment is from homegrown uh, students, homegrown education. and. Uh, you know, a lot of kids within the St. Louis area don't get that education, and that's what I mean by having quality education. And job growth is mostly, uh, like I said, from homegrown entrepreneurship, uh, recruiting from other firms. St. Louis actually does pretty well compared to other cities uh, like it, but it's in the generation of, uh, of entrepreneurship and jobs locally is where we lack, and that's where the education part is key, not just where uh, firms want to send their kids yeah. if they move into town, but having the, the local population becoming better educated. It does sound like two different definitions, what you're talking about, about the, the, grow, about the importance of education. One is whether it's good for the business community to keep businesses coming here, and one is the health of the city itself, the underpinnings mm -hmm. of what the kind of community you're creating and the people you're raising who are going to be your workforce, right. your hourly and shift mm -hmm. workers, and what do they have access right. to. Well, and you know, there are some great technical schools here, uh, both in the city and in the county. We've sponsored, uh, in fact, we're doing it this week for the second year um, in a row. We're sponsoring a Top Chef cook-off between two schools that have hospitality programs that have culinary, culinary schools. And um, these are high school kids, and there's uh, Clyde C. Miller in the city and North County uh, Technical School. And, um, and it's fun to watch these kids engage in a career at an early age. Um, and I, I think what we're doing as a community and those types of programs is really great. It sets, a, it sets a goal. A lot of people don't realize this. We position St. Louis as a university town. There are 25 colleges and universities throughout the region with 100,000 students enrolled. And there was a study done by a group in Atlanta last year that showed that St. Louis region, when you look at the number of degrees awarded annually, we're in the top 10 among metro areas. So we must keep our emphasis on improving education at all levels. We, we, ha we can't let up. We have to also tell our story that we do have a great homegrown workforce here. And those 25 colleges and universities make that possible. Whether it's the state universities or the private universities, uh, those provide opportunities for the workforce of the future. So in terms of high school degrees awarded, our, our, our percentage of the population that has those High school diplomas are slightly above the national average. We're slightly above the national average in four-year degrees, and then slightly above in postdoc so, or uh, postgraduate. So again, we're slightly above the national average. We, we may not be as high uh, educational attainment as places like Minneapolis, but again, we have to keep working on all these different levels to be successful. Another key issue for any city, and especially a, as Roddy pointed out, for a city in the middle of the country, is this transportation grid, transportation network. How well positioned are you? I know about the DOC project. How well positioned are you to expand on that? And how much does that help you to do your job? We're very well positioned against most of the destinations that we compete with for convention business. Um, 
we've got, we've got better airline service, as an example, than most of the cities that we compete with on a regular basis. If you look at Indianapolis or Kansas City or you know, other cities like that that don't have nearly the air service that we have. Um, and so it makes it uh, very appealing for convention groups because it's, they know that a large number of their people can get here. If they don't fly, they can drive. If they don't fly or drive, they can take the train. Um, and so I, you know, I think right now in this economy, we're pretty well positioned. Yeah, I would just add, uh, in addition to the kind of industrial multimodal that I talked about earlier, we have a people multimodal. And that's a, a new center that we just opened downtown at the end of 2008, uh, which provides an opportunity for uh, Amtrak, Metrolink, uh, the Metro bus, uh, taxis, uh, all to come together in one location downtown. And so it's a great jumping off point for a high-speed rail. How do you measure that in terms of how those advantages help you do what you're doing, recruiting, bringing people here? I've, I've had a lot of uh, very uh, heated arguments with location advisors around the country uh, when we talk about some of these big back office type projects. Uh, uh, in many cases, they'll say, well, we want to start looking at the suburbs. And I try to make a case very strongly that they should be looking at downtown St. Louis uh, and one of the reasons is the ability to move people here from different parts of the region. Uh, as we found with the gas shocks last year in July, uh, people weren't willing to pay $4 a gallon uh, with, with so, some of the jobs and incomes they were making. And I think it's a, a wonderful thing that we have the Metro Link, the Metro bus lines here in the city of St. Louis, so that combined with the great electric power infrastructure, the fiber optic infrastructure and being in the center of the region from a population density point of view, we're going to be able to move people here and that, that is an advantage today and I think that people around the country are going to more highly value that advantage as, as we continue through some of these challenging economic times. Does that make sense to you? Does that fit what you see? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, I think the, uh, well, it's, the city of St. Louis has a long way to go. There's been uh, See, more than 50 years of population decline. Population in the city uh, used to be um, 800,000 or so, and now it's 325. I'm not sure. 355. 55. I know the mayor negotiates right. this yearly, no, so we'll. And, <laughs> and, and, and that is an increase. And that's, that's, that's a great increase, right. and that's, right. that's, that's a but big success. But the city used to be among the top 25. It's now under 50 right. in it's, terms of size. It's a big success yeah. that the city itself has turned around, and we're a bit odd because the city... St. Louis geographically is not uh, very large. Uh, the county is uh, just under a million people, mm. and, uh, and the city is, is relatively uh, small in, in that sense. Uh, but this movement out of the city to the suburbs has been going on for a long time, and even the inner suburbs now are seeing the movement further west. So there is a big hollowing out of not just the city of St. Louis, but uh, the core right around the city. And uh, to a large extent, that's because of decades of um, not very good policies in terms of a good business environment with, within the city. And that, I know that that's, you'll say that's changed. And I, I think it has changed. The location of people within the area is all about education. And then how well we do once we're here depends on education. And unless that's all sorted out, then this hollowing out, which is not just St. Louis, but that's what's common across uh, all yeah. these mid Midwestern cities, then you're not going to reverse it. Um, it's, despite all of the, again, the excellent work uh, a lot of policymakers are doing in other fronts. And that's all necessary, but it's not sufficient to, uh, to, to uh, reverse the decline of the central cities. Well, the thing I, I would add, and, and again, I, I, with the education, I, I think that the city does have some, some great schools that uh, people would be, uh, if, when, they, when they see this, they'll be hollering at the TV, we have great schools here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we do want to make sure that uh, we recognize that we do have uh, some great schools and some schools that need to be improved. But in addition to that, uh, there are a lot of businesses that choose to locate uh, in the city. They have young workforce, that, and their, in, their workers want to be near the, the center of what's happening. And you go to companies like Arcturus or HOK. Uh, these are companies where people are riding their bikes to work. Uh, they're loving going out to the various restaurants. They're loving going out to the the parks that are being developed but how downtown. Do you, but how do you build an inner city with middle class uh, families who are all moving to the suburbs because of schools? 
uh, these people you're talking about are young, single people who don't have to make choices about, or people who have the money to send their kids. The same thing is true in Washington, D.C., where I live. So, that, so I, I don't, it seems like the choices are, are, are not as, as, there are examples where you're right, there are shining bits of success, mm -hmm. but how do you reverse the trend, which is not a good one? Well, the thing that we do have uh, in St. Louis is we have uh, different types of housing products that could, in essence, I live in a community that's within five minutes, seven minutes of downtown, which, which actually almost looks like a suburb. And a lot of families live in that same community, and most of those families send their kids to schools in the city. And there are schools that they have identified as good schools that work for their children. Obviously, I'm concerned about my children's education, and I want them to get the best education they can and at a good value and so we have our kids in a school in the city and it, and it works for us and most of our neighbors are the same way so i think that uh, you, you you look for that variety in a city and you look for what will work for you know, your particular uh, circumstance you know i think cities have seen the same trend for decades if you look at downtown the urban core of chicago today it's a very vibrant city but you also won't find a lot of families with little kids living there so, you know, I don't think that that's the whole picture there. Um, the key to, a, I think, a successful downtown is having a good enough variety of types of uses that, um, that there's a balance there. Uh, right now we have about 2.5 million people who spend a night in a hotel in, Saint, in downtown St. Louis on an annual basis. We have people who come down for baseball games, like 3 million a year. We have... 600,000 people who come downtown for Rams games. It, and based on the Blues' success this year, I think that that number is going to keep going up with hockey as well. Um, and then, I don't know how many people, how many people work in downtown St. Louis? 90,000. Yeah. So you start to get that mix. Um, but the one thing that St. Louis was missing 20 years ago was we didn't have downtown housing. We had, we had all those other things, but we didn't have downtown housing. And that was, a, that was a key component that we were lacking. And that's, I think, you know, you could argue that that was the main reason that some of the shopping centers like St. Louis Center uh, didn't do very well uh, was because that one other critical piece. And what the city's been able to do and the, and the private developers with, um, with turning Washington Avenue and some of the other streets downtown into residential communities for young professionals, as you just pointed out, Rodney, or for you know people who of my generation who don't have kids at home and, and want an urban environment and don't want to have to cut the grass anymore, it you know it, it offers a nice uh, a nice living uh, accommodation, and so what we just we just need more of that, and we were really on a track to get more of that when this economy took a turn, um, and the the question now is you know how long will it take for us to get back to see some of those projects come back online is maybe we need some new, very targeted, performance-based economic incentives, not only for business, but for potential residents, uh, including some of the tools that we already have. And maybe those can help, like the New Market Tax Credits Program that the federal government offers to uh, communities like St. Louis to, again, provide some financing, provide some extra tools to uh, entice people to, to maybe behave in a way that they wouldn't have otherwise. Now, Gwen, I know you said this wasn't going to be a food fight, but here I, I have a point where I can <laughs> no, just No, you, you are officially the skunk at the garden party, <laughs> and I, I will allow you that. I'm well suited. Uh, I think exactly the opposite is what needs to be done, is to have, not have targeted uh, incentives. The, uh, the thing that gets lost is the fo in the focus on bringing, bringing in big, big uh, businesses or big projects is that you lose that uh, most people don't work in those places. Most people work in small businesses. And uh, a lot of parts of the St. Louis metro area, in the St. Louis the city in particular, it's very difficult to open up a small business. Uh, but there's a stark difference between the attitudes and the, uh, towards businesses uh, within the city and in other parts of the metro area and also in uh, just what you, how you can do it if you do want to open up a business. I think there's been a lot of uh, difficulty in opening up businesses in the city, particularly retail businesses and restaurants, uh, which is where an awful lot of jobs are, and that's the types of things that people want in the downtown to be able to come down either to live here or to visit here. Okay. Uh, you know, one thing that was real important to uh, the mayor, and I'm glad you acknowledged that you think things have changed, is that uh, we have that we be business friendly. 
and, and we do that a lot. And we work not only ourselves, but together with a number of groups uh, to try to make sure that we're inviting to businesses. And uh, with that, uh, we have a business assistance center. And what that business assistance center does, it takes anybody who's interested in starting a business and just walks them through the steps. So they don't have to sit at the computer and try mm -hmm. to figure it all out. You just come down to the business assistance center and they will hand walk you through all of the steps required uh, to start a business. And that's been very effective. Also with developers, we have a process called preliminary design review. So before a developer comes in to start ordering permits, we have a meeting with the developer and a whole team of anybody who's going to touch that project and just talk that developer through the project. And with that, about 85% of permits are approved right on the first day when the developer comes in to actually request those permits because they've already had this kind of pre-meeting to kind of set the tone. We've had over like 90 small businesses that have opened uh, in downtown that provides this flavor for downtown, boutique uh, stores, restaurants, and so on in the last five years. And it's, it's pretty impressive because that starts giving uh, this population, this 90,000 that work downtown, uh, lots of amenities uh, during, to, during the day to enjoy. And it becomes more of a 24-7 because now we have people living downtown and people can enjoy the restaurants and so on uh, after work. So uh, I believe things are changing, Howard, and uh, changing uh, for the better. And it's making uh, downtown St. Louis a more exciting place to be. I want to thank our panel very much for joining us and thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.